Hey y'all, Fat Man Outdoors. Today we're going to begin step three of reloading 243. Alright, we've got our 50 cases here that we uh, put through our walnut media. The tough nut media is some awesome stuff that shines these cases up. As you can see, I mean, they're better looking now than they was when they come out of the store. Uh, after we got them cleaned up real good with the tough nut media, then we uh, full length resized them this time because some of these these cases have been fired in my daughter's rifle, but not all of them. So I'm going to start from scratch. She's probably going to live a lifetime with these same 50 cases as long as she reloads them after I'm dead and gone. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with 15. I'm going to I'm going to put a powder charge in 15 of these, starting at 34 grains, and then I'm going to do five at 34. Five at 34 and a half and five at 35 and what that does is that keeps me away from the minimum charge that I found for the hundred grain bullets that I've got and away from the maximum charge I don't like to get close to either just for the sake of safety and accuracy because more than likely I'm going to find my sweet spot in the middle range of those charges so now what I wanted to show you was the bullets that we've got here, these are uh, uh, Hornady interlocks, they're 100 grain, boat tail soft point. Uh, they'll say 6 millimeter on them, but 6 millimeter and 243 are the same as you can see, 6 millimeter up top, and it says 243 down at the bottom. I'll take one out and let you take a look at them. They're pretty cool looking little bullet. Uh, as you can see, they're soft point on the end. That means that the open end of the, that the pointed end of the bullet is open. It doesn't have a copper jacket over it. Now. That's so when, when it hits, this uh, open lead part of the bullet will flatten out and it'll open up and it'll mushroom the round as it goes in and cause the, the wound cavity not only to be bigger, but it'll also cause the inertia of the bullet hitting and an opening. All that force is going to be spread out, so you're going to have a a large amount of trauma inside your animal that you're shooting and hopefully it won't go very far. And on the end, I don't know how good you'll be able to see it with these small ones. As you can see, it's got a, a little place at the end of the, the back end of the bullet where it gets a little bit smaller. That's the boat tail. Now, the reason that's important on some of these, especially on smaller bullets, I like them on smaller bullets more than bigger, uh, is it gives it more stability. It kind of works like a submarine through water. Uh, submarine as the, its propellers push it not only do the propellers push the submarine but the, the water that's coming around the back as the submarine is cigar shaped pushes on the back of the, the submarine and it helps push it forward as well it's the exact same principle with these that when you fire the round and it's going down range the air is passing over the front of the bullet and coming around and then when it starts around that little area at the back it actually picks up speed so it'll actually help push the bullet a little bit faster as well so you, you know you're not going to get a huge gain but you're going to keep a better stability because it's kind of keeping inertia forces pushed in or all the way around it on, on the bullet to keep it flying straight but it's also going to give it just a little bit of a boost so you get a little bit more feet per second and, and that's the name of the game when you're shooting game animals is you want speed and you want accuracy because those two things will get you power and they will put an animal down and you don't have to see it suffer or don't have to track it for two miles. So uh, I'm going to get into this and I'm going to charge up 15 of these cases. Again, my house rule is I'm not going to show you what I do when I charge powder. You figure that out on your own. It's a risk that you take. I don't want you to do anything that I do. I want you to do what you need to do. I want you to read your manufacturer's handbooks. I want you to read reloading manuals. And I want you to get answers to questions you have before you apply that to what you're doing on the bench. And be careful. Can't stress. Be careful. Measure, measure, and measure again. Every shot you take starts on this bench as far as safety, accuracy, and the ability to take game and hit what you're shooting at. All that's very important, but it all starts here. So I'll be right back after I charge up 15 of these cases. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Lee 
universal expand uh, neck expanding die to set the ex neck expansion on these cases so it don't get too much of a bail I'll get just enough expansion for the bullet to get a seat start and then we'll go from there so I'm going to get show you how we set this up get her opened up here now inside of this screw the adjustment nut down out and inside of here there's two different punches there's one of course you can see that's great big that's way too big for a 243 and then there's one that's smaller this will go all the way down to uh, uh, two to 22 caliber uh, but what you got to do is you got to use the right one so the smaller one will need to drop in first and then we screw our adjustment nut just want to start it. We don't want to put any kind of adjustment on it. Now, into the press. And then what we want to do is always use your instructions, okay? Because you don't, I don't do this stuff every single day, and you won't either. So you'll forget stuff on occasion. It's very easy to set up, though. Uh, it, it's, uh, it asks you to see the chart to see which one of the plungers that you're going to need to use and we already got that so, so it says place an empty uh, sized case in the shell holder and raise the ram to the top of the stroke so now we're going to take one of these we're going to put it in here raise it all the way up now it says to screw the die down until it comes in contact with the case so we screw it down all right, we're in contact with the case right there. That little expander in there is touching the top of the case right now. So now it says to lower the ram. All right, now we've got that. Now our, it's just touching our case. It's just touching against our case. It's not doing any firing yet. Now it says to lower the case and turn this screw the screw in adjustment one half of a turn now it's really hard to figure out exactly what one half of a turn is so here's something that I do is I'll take a punch and I'll these are aluminum so it's easy to do and I'll scribe me a little line on there just anywhere it doesn't matter because you're looking at that line as your point to reference off of so you know if you're going to screw it from half a turn you take it from the side it's on right now and put it opposite so I'm going to turn that to it's pointing on the opposite side okay now that not, might not necessarily be exactly the expansion that I'm wanting but it's going to get me started so now I'm going to raise the case I could feel it just touch now most of the time this will get you where you need to go but first, before I even try to put a bullet in it, I like to look at it and see what I'm seeing. And that looks okay. It doesn't look like it's too big. Then we take out one of these bullets, and I want to see. Uh, that's, that's awful good. That's awful good right there. As you can see, the whole bolt tail got down in there, and I just barely... Listen, listen. When I pull this out, listen. So now I can just barely get past the bolt tail in there. And, and I don't know if you can hear that. But it's like a little suction cup letting go. That's because you're getting, you used up the minimal amount of neck tension to seat that bullet to where it's just in there enough that then you can push it on down when you're in your ram and you're seating your bullet. So that, that setup, that quick, that easy, as long as you pay attention to doing the right thing. You, on these rifle rounds, most of the time you'll have to take out one of the expanders because because it just it's too long if you leave them both in there on pistol cartridges you'll probably leave both of them in there unless it's like a big long magnum uh pistol cartridge uh like a, like a 357 or something uh, or in a straight wall case like a 4570 you'll have to leave them in there well, you'll have to take the, the the second one out of course but on this that first try what the manufacturer tells you to do is seating it down where it's just touching your case and then turning it half a turn in. That gave me just the right amount to get that 
that bullet started in there it's not too loose and it's I'm not having to force it in it it takes a seat just by sitting on there but it takes a good seat and that way I'm not losing any of my neck tension when I go to to resize this and I'm not going to have to overwork the brass by pushing the brass back in too far when I do the crimp on, on this and if you notice on these bullets they do have a cantaloupe you can see it right there a little looks like teeth cut into it and what that is is to kind of tell you where you need to put your crimp at and it's not necessarily an absolute have to case we won't get into that right now for when I see these that's where I'm going to go with and I'm going to put my crimp right there and uh, that way I know that uh, it's going to be a good crimp on the cantaloupe but when I, after we shoot these and I get them fire farmed to her rifle and we get them all trimmed the exact same length because y'all remember back when we we done the trimming on these some of them were shorter some of them were a little bit longer so technically you if you went by one depth you you might have some that crimped at the top of the cantaloupe you might have some that crimped at the bottom of the cantaloupe i want to try to individually make each one of these bullets crimped right in the middle of the cantaloupe so i've got everything as close to being the same as possible so when i fire these 15 rounds that I'm going to get as good a data as possible of having equally matched cartridges for all three of our, our powder charges. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, flare all these. I'll do a couple more of them for you. Just put it in there. Raise it up. Push it all the way down. I can just feel it contact. And then I want to take a bullet and I want to check that one. Perfect. I mean, that's absolutely perfect. You couldn't ask for a better bullet seating depth. So I think we're good on these. I'm going to go ahead and do 15 of these up. I won't bore you with watching me do this. Do one more here. Oh, yeah, that's perfect, guys. That's absolutely beautiful. You couldn't ask for, for a better fit. I'll go ahead and do the rest of these up, and then when I come back, uh, I'll have these charged up, and we'll be ready to seat bullets and uh, move on to the next step hey y'all if you don't mind click subscribe and if you like the video and click the like button and we appreciate every one of y'all and hope to see you in the next video it's the fat man i'm gone